can say that. I get the atibia radial, but he's not RTC because he's stable. He's not in shock, mechanism with only a two meter fall. Nothing indicate that he's RTC. We all agree with that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, you can bring him in the EDV because he's not ambulatory. Because he is, huh? I'd like to buy a bomb. Um. Okay, so yeah, he's get the ETV ready. He can't walk. All right, blanket, oxygen, support. Now I'm starting my secondary survey. Full secondary. Okay, I'm not going to go over this whole thing with you right now because it's a waste of time. You should know how to do a secondary. If you have a difficulty with it, please call me over. So you have to, you have to show it, right? You have to do it. No, no, no. The Nope, it's a small amount of blood, or it's only a deformity, there's no blood there at all. If it was a little bit of blood, mm -hmm. it's sure. only support. Right. Okay. Because it's not a massive pooling and it's not an injury to the trunk. Okay, massive pooling or injury to the trunk may indicate a possible RTC. This is, there's no possibility right now this is RTC. There's nothing indicating that. Yet. Okay, so no rationale, so just remember. Fractures on the arms and legs only get supported during the rapid body survey according to the protocols for this course. That's a very important, <coughs> very important point I'm making. Do we understand that? Okay, so if you have a small amount of blood or a deformity on an arm or a leg, on a spinal patient, during your rapid body survey, you only need to support that area. You do not need to expose it until the head to toe. If it's a massive pooling of blood or it's an injury to the trunk, there's actually a handout. It says right here, only two injuries exposed during the primary survey. It tells you details. Severe external bleed or trunk of the body. And it gives you four subtopics of injuries to the trunk and when you'd expose them need to go by that. All right, I'm on my secondary. With me here? You okay yep. with this? Yep, yep. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, people? Yes. Name. Oh. Day. Okay. Oh, time. A... Breathing. Time it. Pulse. Time it. GCS. What year is it? Squeeze my fingers. Pupils. Check them with the pen light. Okay. Skin. Chief complaint, allergies, meds, pass, blah, 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 blah. Investigate the pain. Shh, do, do I need to investigate this pain? No. Yes. Is this a head, chest, or abdominal injury? No. 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 Is it a walk? If it was a head, chest, abdominal, and it was a spinal, I still wouldn't need to discuss. I only do it for head, chest, abdominal pain when they walk in and there's no spinal. I don't know <coughs> the cause of this. That's why it's called investigate the pain. I'm not going to investigate this. Oh, what makes it hurt? What makes it worse? When you move it, where is it? On my leg? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you so, so need to know the purpose of PP Done. Okay, anatomy chart, make an X. Review systems, no, no, no. Last question, any weakness, numbness, tingling? He says, yes, my right leg. Doesn't make him RTC because the numbness, tingling is below the fracture site. If there's numbness, tingling anywhere else, that would make him a spinal cord. Cord, which is automatically RTC. RTC. You get that? Numbness and tingling anywhere on the body from a spinal patient makes them RTC, except the exception to the rule is if the numbness and tingling is below a fracture site, then it's okay. It's caused, the numbness and tingling is caused by the fracture, not by the spine. Mm -hmm. And along. if it's just an injury, but it's not a fracture, tingling below the injury, that's still, still same, thing. same thing, right? Yeah. Now, reassess ABCs. You still with me, buddy? Yeah, airway's clear. Time the breathing for 15. Don't write anything down. Check the pulse. Don't time it. Don't write anything down. Skin check. So I did four things. Airway, breathing time, pulse check, skin check. That's my reassessment of my ABCs. Now it's time for me to, this is where you want to start paying attention. Okay, I'm going to do a head and toe here. Okay, we're all okay with where I am on this sheet here? Mm. Yep. Okay, let me know if you have any pain. Watch how I do a head to toe. It's not a rapid body. Any pain, numbness, tingling it all day. I'm looking inside your ears. Can you hear me okay? No fluid in there. Any pain in the face at all? 
How about your shoulders, bro? You okay? He says, everything's okay. Your sternum, collarbones, look underneath. Feel it. Take a deep breath. Breathe in and out. Does that hurt your ribs in the back at all? How about your no, back? No. Lean in the back. Do it again. Any pain there, sternum, ribs? Okay, I'm gonna check your abdomen. It's very important. Breathe in. I'm gonna push up on the kidneys. Push down on this. Any pain in there? Do it again. Breathe in. Breathe out. Any pain? Do it again, please. Let me know. Breathe in. Breathe out. When you breathe out, I push down. Breathe in. I push down. Okay. Nothing in there. Sorry. I'm checking the pelvic area. Push down lightly. Don't sit there and put all your weight on it. Squeeze them. All a pelvis, a pelvis fracture is so sensitive. You touch it minimally, they start freaking out. So remember, the pelvis is like this. It usually snaps from the middle, like behind your spine here, around the center. So any touching of that, it'll be so painful. All you need is like barely like this, and they start freaking out. Okay, anything in here? Okay. The legs are broken. People like them slightly like this. You let it go, boom, imagine if the brake was here and you let it go, like that, that is painful. Okay, that's why I got this supported here. I've come across a person who had a femur fracture and all the first all the first responders, medical responders, firefighters go crazy trying to evaluate the patient. All I did was hold it and the kid, it was a kid, he's 13, he kept grabbing my wrist and kept saying, thank you, thank you, don't let go, thank you. And they tried to move me out of the way. His parents were like, let him get up. His leg's not broken. I said, fine. I moved out. The kid started screaming in pain. No, please. I went to just put my hand underneath his, underneath his femur like this. He's like, oh, thank you. He literally came up to me like days later and said, thank you. All the way down here. <laughs> All that because you caught him breathing into your car. <laughs> Expose. So I this leg. Expose it. What am I going to do this for him? Pulse. P uh, yeah, I call it PMS. Pulse. Motor. Motor. Your motor. Sensory. PMS. Which one am I touching? Pulse <coughs> motor sensory. Okay, it's actually CMS, but if you remember it easier with PMS, I don't know why. It's people are. Remember things when you tell to Little things at FSI. Any pain in here? Yeah. Yeah. So right there, I it looks because. The injuries up here, I don't, I don't come down here and expose this first. I expose the injured area first, that's what I hit first. Exposure, what do I see? Slight discoloration, minimal deformity, but swelling. Okay, that's nothing I can do about it. I like to emphasize where the injury is, so I want to landmark it. Help her continue to hold underneath like that. What are you noticing about this assessment? It's very thorough. It's very thorough. Yeah, it probably could be a bit more thorough. Could you put ice on it right now? No, because yeah. I haven't checked the pulse distal. What if oh, you okay. have no pee? You gotta drink some water. There's circulation, I meant to say. <laughs> Notice I simulate with the scissors. I check the pulse. Present. Now look what I do when I when I when I grab. I don't. I need to get a motor. I'm not gonna say push your foot down. Imagine if he pushes his foot down, his femur is broken. Damn. That's just mean. Or even pulling it back. Imagine a bone that's broken. It goes. Uh, uh. Ooh. Not good. So I just say gently wiggle your toes. That's good enough. I felt a minimal wiggle. Good enough. He's his brain is able to send messages down there. Sweet. He's got good neuro neurological big toe. I'm gonna compare the two just to make sure they're doing good. Even if they're not. It's just an evaluation. Pulse, they're both equally strong. Gently move the toes. Good enough. Which one am I touching? Face. All right. I'm going to give this guy some ice because you have circulation distal and you're not in shock. <coughs> so I'm on ice now. Now, I'm not quite done my head to toe. I have to do the arm still. Wrap this up so it's not straight on his leg when just exposed. So the layer between the ice and the skin, we're going to put it proximal so the, when, the, when the blood flows down, it cools off this area and hopefully minimizes a bit of pain. Okay, I'm going to come up here, check out your shoulder, any pain in there? Can you move your forearm okay, your wrist okay? I'm going to check three things. P, pulse, M, motor, squeeze it. What am I touching? S, so. sensory. Same thing over here, P -M -S. pretty detail. Thorough, any pain? Pulse, Can you move your arm? Motor, no sensory. problem with the elbow. Can you move your wrist? Okay. P pulse. M motor, squeeze. 
century. And which one? Yeah, I'm going to compare them just because to be thorough. Okay, squeeze. Which one? Speaking, right? Okay, good. All right. <laughs> Okay, so I get back on. I've done my head to toe. Can I rule out a spinal? No, no because the injury is above the knee. So what's above the knee? Middle of the shin up is above the knee, right? So anything above here, I can't rule out a spinal. So if I can't rule out a spinal, I don't like to put a collar on my patient until I get them on the board. So what I do, just to kind of remind myself, because I tend to forget things, I know you find it hard to believe. <coughs> Slip on things. I'm going to put the collar here just to remind myself that he's eventually going to get a collar. And now I really feel famished and not sure what I'm doing. I'm like reassessing VCs. He's still with me, buddy. All right, breathing. Airways clear. Breathing 15. Pulse checks. Get checked. Now I can start to do my treatment. Now, this is where people really start to mess up. <coughs> but keep it simple. He, what's, the, what's the rule of thirds? Two above. Two above everything. No, rule of thirds is all joints are all long bones are divided into thirds. All long, I, all long bones are divided into thirds. Upper lower is considered a joint. What's the principle or the rule for immobilization? One up, one down. Sure. Up, upper one third, that's in the book. Upper third or lower third, the joint above or below. Two yeah. Up, What's the principle of immobilization? What did I say to you? Two up. Two, two up. Two above everything and down. all below. So if I go two above, one, two, everything below. Will that work out? Yeah. You can only put splints in two spots. You can, in three spots. You can either put them lateral, medial, or posterior. You can never put a splint here. It won't do any benefit. So lateral, medial, or posterior. Okay. You can, only put, you can only use two of them. So which one do you not need here? The small one. The posterior. The posterior in the back. Okay. So we're going to use a lateral. And then medial. Oh, so now we're going to come all the way up to under your arm. So here's the complicated part of the course which really is not that complicated. You get a wide, make sure it's wide, because wide works fast. Yeah, to put your I put arms it on YouTube. Out. Yeah. So the class can look at me. Go like this. Yeah. Like that. Just a wee bit, I just pull it a little bit. Did you invent that? Yeah. I... It's grown up in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. I'm, um... How to open a car? <laughs> How to open a car. Can you talk, don't talk about the middle days, please. Can't go back. No fun. Okay, so now the second one is the one people get confused about. Now it just makes me laugh. <coughs> people, how would you like to be tied up between the bottom of your ribs and your stomach. No one wants to be tied there. You know, our vital organs are there. There's a reason we don't tie anything around this part. Okay? You know, I was told well, people that pulled their pants way up here, I was like, what are you thinking? Is that comfortable? But anyways, you don't tie any triangulars across this area. You don't splint. There's nothing to splint here. It's just, it needs to be bone, okay? Or some kind of a structure of the body. So everything is below the belt line. So top, upper chest area, and then below the belt line. Okay? And you can really literally go over the pubic symphysis, which is your private area. So go right over this area, right here. That's what you're aiming for. So if you don't have one of these, you can always do this, the old method. Underneath the hollow back, and then shimmy it down. Okay, or, oh my God, your butt's hurting. Then we go underneath here, like this. I showed you two different methods there. Notice you push this through under the body first. Push, then pull. I don't know why he doesn't patent it. Hmm? He should get a patent. All right. For the hanger. There's that. <coughs> now things are easier. So so it's going to get all open. So he should make a patent for the cord hanger. <coughs> yeah. Make a more thin one. He can make money. Mm. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yeah, for this one? Yeah. It's so cheap to make, too. Yeah. Yeah.
people say, well, I always put this for five there or whatever to I just say, you know what? Put as many as you can to cover that other leg. Now, you kind of be careful because you got to keep that support underneath. But usually it's a hand, so you can work around the hand. Now you're not able to support and lift each leg up the every fracture. You gotta use your discretion and common sense. You know your objective is to prevent. What's your objective here? Prevent further aggravation and immobilize <coughs> the position found. Get that? What's your what's your what's your objective for a fracture? Immobilize for prevent further injury. Uh, prevent aggravation and mobilize for the position found. Yeah. Prevent what further pain and, 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 and have it splinted in the position found. The last, of course, position found does not allow you to get them on a board. In which case, you do a minimal movement. Like if this lays way out here like, and I can't get them on a spine board, then I'd have to have somebody hold above the injury below. And I'll just gently pull and realign minimally. It's not, it's not nice, but sometimes they call that life over. Man. So I'll reassess my ABC. So what do I do next? What should I? Oh my God! What do I do? He's still with me, Dave. Everybody's clear breathing. All scan. See that? Yeah. Okay. Where was I? Let's go. So I'm gonna need a long splint. Can I get a long splint, please, nurse? Thanks, nurse Lauren. Okay. So I would have somebody still. I'm gonna get a blanket right there. No, like a like tiny, have tiny little bright blanket right there. Little blankets. Yeah, they're my buddies. They fill in little hollow spaces. Just to make sure I have less pain or aggravation to my patients. See that? They kind of fit in that area. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got to that. Probably be more careful. I have more assistance or something. Okay, see how I did that? And they're also really good for filling in the hollows. <coughs> Hello. Can I get a blanket, please? Thanks, <coughs> Jesse. There's a little. Look at this hollow space right here. Okay. Sorry. Everybody's got a couple of them. I'm feeling that. It's just for comfort. It's not mandatory, but it's for comfort. Can I get a short blanket, please? Hi, Mom. <coughs> that one. One in your hand. Said blanket? Yeah. yeah. You didn't say blanket. You know what I meant. When I say blanket, I mean splint. <laughs> yeah, like, it depends on the text I say it like this, you know, the intensity. When I said, want a blanket, then it's the splint. <laughs> English is your first language, right? Come on. Everyone's human. Is it? Splint? Can I see a splint? Thank you. See, he knows the splint. See, there's the splint. Next time you can just hit him in the head with it. <laughs> <laughs> Violence isn't the answer always. No, it's not. I should play for the Broncos. Okay. He's been doing better than some teams, I know. Yeah, but the future is always so, will. The future is bright. How about you? It's bleak. Okay. Keep going here. <laughs> Take a deep breath. I'm trying to help you out here. So what you do, a brother trying to help you? You got a deep breath in. Breathe out. Okay. So. I always go to the very top. This is just my way of doing it. I find it works. So top, you, you use the patient's shoe? The bottom. Somebody be holding these together. It's the very top, so look, I got it. Narrow. It's narrow. It's called figure eight. Okay. Underneath. One <coughs> the other. It's a figure eight. Let's go mess this one up. You see what's going on here? Underneath both splints. Want to see that one again? Sure. Da -da 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 -da. 
<clears throat> underneath one. Look, I don't lift the leg, I lift, lift the splint. Thanks, guys. All right. Okay, so start at the top. Bottom. And now we go in between. See how much of a difference that made? Try to keep this wide. and you go to the hospital because <coughs> you only get a broken leg and they're going to take him off the board and make him wait in the, in the patient room or what? Uh, he'll be, he'll be in most likely, yeah. He, yeah. They won't, they'll, they'll bring him right into a room. Oh, will they? I oh. think they will if the paramedics bring him. He won't be waiting too long. Okay. I mean, he'll be waiting probably a while, but he won't be waiting in the room. In the room, in patient room or waiting room. Waiting room, yeah. Okay, cool. No, how he's doing it and wide. And fractures are considered fairly serious. Trying to cover as much no real estate as he can. Shock. Okay. Trying to cover as much of the patient's wound as he can. You tuck, tuck it and support the break like or fracture, whatever's under there. That was to keep it wide. Simple knots. Now, the fact that I tied this first allows these wounds to be fairly firm. How are you doing? You're so, oh, how are you doing? Still with me? Yep. Obviously, you're passed out. Breathing right. All skin. For now, I would put the two ounces underneath your head. Does it make you more comfortable now? No. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So then I would put a short blanket between here. So this is important. So after you do this, you go, Tom, come take a look at what I did here. And I'm like, what are you going to do now? That looks good. I'll be able to tell from the board. It's good, right? Because look, you know I always say this, look. Practice left. This one's okay, yeah. but look, from here, look. No RTC, more than a fist in between, practice left. okay? No, no, okay. And now, so I'll say, it's no, no, what do you do next? And what I want to hear is, collar, tie the legs, practice lift, and a lift. Mm -hmm. So the collar you know, the tie the legs you know to keep the spine <coughs> in, in alignment, because you need a bit of a space here for the spine to be natural, so <coughs> you tie them together firmly, nice and compact. And then a practice lift and a lift. The practice lift and a lift is only done on non-RTC patients that were initially spinal. It says it all in your sheet. Look at the very bottom on the bottom right hand corner. There we go. Bottom right hand corner. Use this What does it say? <coughs> initially, they were, if they're non-RTC and they were initially a spinal, whether we ruled it out or not, when we get them on the board, it's always a practice lift and a lift. Actually, do you want to do the practice lift and lift while you're done, okay? Yep. You're already down there. Yeah, right right do you only use one triangular to tie legs together? Is that what it is? Uh, you, you could do two. Okay, but I'm going to... Sorry, folks, just kidding.
Uh, raise your hand if you know the answer. Don't say it out loud. Side of the injury. Come on, you tell me you don't know. What now? Okay, Jesse, when is it? Well, what side do I put the board on? Injured side or uninjured side? I'm going to say uninjured side. Okay, if I put it on the end, now I want you to imagine this, right? Okay. I put it on the uninjured side, and, and roll, you roll back. Good luck roll. Right on the end. <coughs> Okay. Straight pain. So here's the tip. Okay, that's a good try. Don't be afraid to answer it, man. You gotta know. You gotta. It's okay. You gotta be afraid. You can't be afraid to get it wrong sometimes to get it right. So you always put the board on the same side as the majority of the injury. So let's say if they have two broken legs and one broken arm. What side are you putting the board on? Broken arm. Broken. Yeah. Broken. Because there's less damage going on at the opposite side. So you always put the board. It's a little trick. You know that I learned over the years. Whatever side is hurt the most, bring the board on that side. People are like, what are you talking about? Well, think about when you're rolling the other way. Mm. Okay? So. No tricks, a trick question. Okay, what happens if you have to fly them? Then we do them lateral. We'll do that Thursday morning. We'll do a little lateral. But, but say the injury is on the side. Like we're like, you go on the opposite yeah. side. Sucky, sucky. I've almost finished the bottle in like three days. <laughs> How many drops are you taking? How about three drops per? You told me, and you're like, just go crazy with it. <laughs> well, I want to do what Anthea says. He seems pretty smart. <laughs> Looks are deceptive, Steve. <laughs> Don't beat me up. Okay. I think I'm getting a cold now. Is my oh, no. Okay. So get that set up. Won't take you as long as me if you probably chat less than I did. Can I get a pull through? One or you could do two. If it's broken leg, I might do two. Mm -hmm. What would you use if the patient that wasn't wearing shoes or flip flops or something? Yeah, you just plant, just walk, two by four, I don't know. Something. Branch, wrap in a t shirt, I don't know. Use your, use your creativity. So, a creative guy. Roll up the magazine. That's not a bad idea. Hey! Oh, good job. Well, that was the old splitting technique we used to use. Put your arms up. It's so fun. Like you're a vampire. Shoot. Darn it. Oh, that almost forgot a collar. Collar. Bell. Can you know that? So the helpers let go? Or still holding yes. C-spine? It's okay that you do the collar now. It's not late. No, as long as you do it for But somebody's still holding the head, right? Yeah. So the helper's still there holding the head. Just measured color. Oh, I'll get my for you. Swoop, oh sorry, Dave. It's okay. You'll yeah. twist back. <laughs> there was a spinal before. <laughs> okay, here's my practice lift lift. So we're gonna practice on somebody approximately the same height and weight weight as Dave. Who's Derek? So I'm gonna have, let's have three of you's, <coughs> three of you folks there. Get two of you push in when I ask you to. So this is just a simple roll. You want to stay down there, on the side of the patient. And uh, before we go down there, I want you to when his leg, his, his feet are like this, right, like at an angle. So he goes up, his feet should actually be off the ground a little bit. And keep his, get his ankles together. Keep your hands around his ankles. Or everybody else, grab across the opposite hip and shoulder. We're all gonna roll in, in unison, okay? You hold the legs together up together. Now you, when we do it, we're gonna go a little bit more than lateral. You're gonna push the board right, quite a bit more than lateral, okay? But try to have support him on your lap. 
well. So we do the practice first, so we don't do so we can have the practice day. Ready in unison. I'm gonna ask you to push it in. Count of three, put them up. Second count of three, you put them down. Between those counts of three, push the board in. Understand? Between the counts of three, push the board in. I'll say push. Count of three, lift up. One, two, three. Whoa! No, no, not with all your might. Go back down. That's why we do a practice. Got to remember. This guy's He's legs right. broken. Do it nice and slow and gentle. <laughs> don't quickly lift. Like his legs are way up in the air. All you're doing is kind of going with him. Got to make sure his, his ankles. Lauren, when he goes on his side, your ankles should be like this. You don't want to go like that because his, his feet will pay for it. You don't want to go up on the air like that either, just kind of naturally. Does that make sense? Hands to the practice. Okay. One, two, three. Gently. Uh, push it in, push it in, push it in. Push it in, push it in. Push it in. More, more, more towards you. More, more, more. Okay, push the board in. Count three, put them on. One, two, three, push the board in. Okay. You guys have to do a slight bit of pulling out. Grab the blankets, fist the blanket. You guys push, you guys pull. On the side there, Michael. I'm just looking for Come on, broski. One, two. Hold on, put your knees against it. You run down. Okay. This is why we do a practice lift and a lift. So we do. That was good. He's on the board. Okay. What do you mean? There's also eight person direct lift. Not a fan of that. It's hard enough getting five or six people to do in unison. Now you're doing eight. Okay. Um, question about the scenario for me. Uh, when you tie him down, I guess, would you... Same straps. Same everywhere. straps, okay. Just avoid this part right here on top. Yeah, okay. Just work around it, that's why you have that. Say move. he has a, a hip injury. That would be RTC a long time ago. Oh, yeah, And okay. you would have padded a lot of areas in here. Oh, okay. padded lots of blankets around. Okay. Hip is, <coughs> hip is usually deformed. Usually hips do this. Like that. So there's all that hollow area. See, po see posterior hip fracture, well, posterior hip dislocation, anterior hip dislocation, broken hip, mm, lot, lots of, yeah. Okay, hips makes it RTC. Huh? Hip makes it RTC. Hips automatic RTC. <coughs> so are we going to be using the blankets again to fill the, hol fill the holes? Yeah, you can. We're not going to get in this, we're not going to get this far. In the exam, they just say, how would you get them on the board? You say practice left and left. They don't make you really demo it. If they do, it's really straightforward. Three people on one side, practice it first and do it. All you're gonna do is revert. We've already practiced it, now we're gonna do it together. Tony wants to hear that you know it does a process. Uh, this was the treatment, like splinting it and wrapping it. That yeah. was the treatment. Okay. The treatment consists of when it's time for treatment after the head and toe and ice, and you can't rule out a spinal or you can, then it's laying the ties down first, then the splints. I get a lot of people laying the splints down going, okay, well, now I'm triangle it. It splints out of there first. All the ties down. 